Today was a pretty good day. Vicki made breakfast for me this morning, although I had to share some of it. And then I had some buddies of mine from 20 years ago stop by today to race RC cars out back on the fifth scale track. It's been 20 years since Mike and Sean were out here to race RC cars on a track behind my house. We used to do this every weekend. I can't imagine how much money we wasted screwing around with nitro cars out back, tires and foams every weekend. But today was just kind of a test and tune day for these fifth scales, just to size everything up for everybody to figure out what their gearing needs to be, what tires, what shock setup. It was a good day, we had a lot of fun. Mike has my old Losi DBXL K&N buggy. It's fifth scale, but it's a little bit shorter wheelbase and about 10 pounds lighter than the stadium trucks. And it does very well. Even though it has only a 29 or 23 cc engine, the lightweight and the short wheelbase all wheel drive buggy does very well. And it's hard to catch him once he's out on you. He has to make a mistake to lose a race. Now, Michael is known for a little bump and run action. He's not above putting a wheel right in the door or cutting through the infield if he has to. <laughs> anyway, once we got our RC fix in for the day, Billy and I unhooked the dually from the trailer and ran it down to the truck stop to fill it up with fuel. Just trying to get a little bit of a head start on getting ready for next weekend. Once we got back to the shop, Billy went inside to work on his S10 and I started a little fire out back so we could sit down, maybe have a drink together after we get done working. I can tell Billy's going through some rough times right now, but I think it's gonna be all for the best once everything calms down. He got the radiator pulled out of the S10 tonight and we're ready to fix it up tomorrow. And he's just about got the engine ready to put down in the Malibu. He's got the cylinder heads on it, camshafts in it, but we just need some gaskets and a few odds and ends before we can finish it up. So Billy's video is already up from the weekend. I was really impressed by that. Uh, Allison and Tommy are doing a fantastic job of getting this stuff knocked out. Um, very, 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 very thankful for that. Um, the kids are doing a fantastic job with videography and editing. And uh, not only that, but Allison's doing a, a fantastic job with organizing all the shirts and hoodies and hats and merchandise you can see it's all folded and stacked up back there on the shelves and she is doing an incredible job keeping up with the emails and getting orders shipped out in a timely fashion thank god because we desperately needed help with that um, be patient guys i know there's some people from australia that's waiting on orders and we can't ship to australia anymore they're returning every package that we ship to australia COVID or something that evidently Australia is, Australia is on some lockdown or I don't know, but we just can't ship anything down there for a while. So when that gets straightened up, we'll get back to shipping to you guys down there in the land down under. Meanwhile, I guess we'll talk about the weekend. We went to Pacemakers for the Boo Bash. Um, the guys from down around Dayton put that race on and can't thank them enough for the opportunity to race up there this weekend. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, it was a little bit of a low turnout because of the weather, I'm sure, but uh, the track was fast. Uh, that, that place is hard to kill. It's hard to, it's hard to kill that place. That's, that's a hell of a good track up there. So um, Billy went a really, really good number, about a 10th faster than he thought he was gonna go right off the trailer. been working on the carburetor this week um, I don't think I took any video of it but uh, when we were at Onondaga 
uh, well, we've been fighting uh, a lean air fuel ratio uh, at higher boost levels pretty much all year. And some of it stem from plug fuel filters, chased that for months, I don't know how long. And then the fuel pump died and we realized, well, the fuel pump's probably been going out of it for a while. And that may have been due to the plug fuel filters. So now that the, the fuel filters are fresh and it's got a fresh fuel pump on it, I've been able to start inching my way up on this air fuel ratio uh, with the carburetor. And um, luckily this weekend, it finally showed on the air fuel what I have been looking for. Um, it's just one of them things. You chase your tail with race cars. I don't care what you got. You're going to chase your tail at some point, a certain amount. And I've been chasing my tail quite a bit with this issue. So we finally got that straightened up and uh, we threw a little bit more fuel at it. The engine responded well to it. Um, and I think we're on the right track, but we made it through first round. Uh, the Camaro in the other lane kind of knocked the tires off. Uh, that car is not really set up for no prep. It's a radial prep car, I think out of Pennsylvania. And it's very, very fast, very fast car. But, uh, you know, we pretty much primarily focus on street and no prep. And that's what we're into. That's what we're set up for. That's what we know how to do. So when the radial prep car comes out and tries this stuff, uh, it's tough. It's, it's extremely difficult. And the guy that drove the car was very nice. He stopped by the trailer and was telling me a little bit about the car. And that car's extremely fast. It's just, just not really set up for no prep. The shock package and everything on the car just isn't quite right. So anyway, we made it through first round, made a really good lick. And then from that point on, um, we started to push the envelope uh, with 60 foot and 330 to see just how much we could put down early in the run because the track from 330 feet on down looked very slippery. Uh, even some of the better cars that we know generally do very well were slipping and sliding and having to abort runs. So we tried to play it conservative from 330 on down for round two. So uh, how'd you feel after your first pass? First pass was really good. We jetted the carburetor up this week because we noticed it was going lean at Onondaga. And it lowered the air fuel ratio almost uh, half a whole point. So I'm happy with the air fuels at, and it made more power than I thought it was going to. It actually went faster than I thought it was going to by about a tenth. So we're gonna start turning up the 60 foot, slowing the front shocks down and 60 and harder. Second round, we got paired with that beautiful 55 Chevy out of Dayton, and um, we got the win. Um, but Billy noticed that uh, as he watched the GoPro footage back from inside the cab, we could see a lot of steering input. A lot of steering input. And that generally means that you're going to lose some ET. And in our case, you're definitely going to lose a little mile an hour. So the mile an hour didn't really come up like we hoped that it would. And I think it was primarily due to leaves on the track. And the steering input was primarily um, 
due to the steering input having to steer the truck back and forth uh, from 330 feet on down. So we made it through second round, but uh, it was shaping up that, you know, there was some, you know, as you go, it gets harder and harder. The cars that are left are faster and faster. And so for third round, we plan to lean on it considerably harder in the 60 and 330 because so far the truck is just eating it up whatever we throw at it's just taking it now from 330 feet on down it's questionable still but from from the starting line to 330 feet that truck doesn't care it is it's a freak So it looked to me like the Falcon had knocked the tire off of it uh, right about 30 or 40 feet out. I'm assuming that they uh, got aggressive with the tune-up and just got uh, a little too aggressive, I guess. Um, the Falcon kicked the tire, and so it, it, uh, that, their chances were pretty much over at that point after it kicked the tire. But you can see in that video just how hard that truck is accelerating in low gear. Um, really pretty incredible. Um, the We love those Phoenix tires, I can tell you that. Uh, will it 60 foot faster on a Mickey? I don't know. We haven't been on a Mickey in a long time. I love the Mickeys. Our fastest ever 60 foot is on a Mickey, um, still to this day. So we haven't had enough time yet to work with the phoenixes to see exactly how far they'll go you know we're we take a little bit here and a little bit there and that's that's the thing about no prep racing is you can't just go test on a prep track someplace and work your way into a good tune-up uh for an, for the next prep race you can't do that with no prep because no prep is different every time you show up even if it's the same track Sometimes they scrape a little bit better than others. Sometimes you're an early draw. Sometimes you're a late draw. And you just never know. It's hard. It's very hard. It's incredibly hard. I can't even, I can't even begin to explain to you guys how difficult it is to do what we're doing with that thing. Because it's, it's just a stock S10. It's, it really is. But anyway, so that set us up for the finals with Perry Stanley. And unfortunately, we had a little mishap. Yeah, maybe the radiator pet cocks loose. Diabetic maybe gain more. Watch the GoPro. How did that come so loose? Now, uh, the only thing I can tell you is that we're very fortunate that what happened there happened, when it happened, how it happened, where it happened. Um, Tommy and Allison were taking some footage in the staging lanes before the final, and Tommy just so happened to notice that there was some um, antifreeze dripping out of the truck. It had a little puddle uh, right there below the radiator. So he went back and got Billy and Billy come up, pulled the hood off of it and went to check it. And as soon as he touched the petcock, it just fell out, fell out right in his hand, drained the radiator right there, right on the spot. Uh, had that happened as he was going down the track in the final, 
uh, most certainly would have caused a crash. No question. The truck wouldn't be here in one piece today uh, had Tommy not seen that in the staging lanes. Now, yes, we know we're not supposed to have antifreeze in it, but it's getting cold up here. It's in Ohio, and we're not done racing for the season. We're going to head south and race down south this winter. So there's a lot of times where the truck is going to ride on a trailer in freezing temperatures, and there's a lot of times the truck has to sit outside up here because we don't have enough room to keep everything indoors all the time. So uh, the other day when Billy had to head off of it, uh, he and Kenny went ahead and put a jug antifreeze in it just in case it's, it has to sit outside uh, and the temperature should drop below 32 degrees. The last thing we need is a cracked block. And that's not even Billy's engine. That's the engine out of Tommy's truck. So we don't need any more problems right now with uh, cracked blocks or anything like that. So that's why it had a little antifreeze in it. We've always run straight water. All season long, we're, we run straight water, but right now it's got a little antifreeze in it just to keep it from freezing. So, uh, that's it. I mean, that's it for the weekend, but things are, uh, things are good here right now, and things are tough at the same time. It's difficult right now. Um, Billy's going through a hard time right now. We sat out by the fire for a little while tonight. Me, Billy, June, and Chevy. And we sat and talked for a little while. He had some friends call while we were out there to check on him as well. He's going to be okay. But it's going to take a little while to get over what he's going through. You know, um, i just like to ask everybody... Uh, I've seen that there's some pretty nasty comments on her YouTube and I can't, Vicki and I haven't been able to see her Facebook and Instagram and all that for a long time. She's had us blocked on that stuff for a long time, but, um, because, you know, we don't, um, approve of a lot of the things that she does and she has been doing for a long time and, um, it's just been rough. I want you guys to please refrain from leaving nasty messages on her YouTube and her social media stuff about our family. Don't, please just don't do that. We don't want any problems like that. We don't want her under any more pressure than she's already under. Uh, you know, we all still care about Molly. We don't want to see anything bad happen to her. Um, but it's out of our control. It is what it is. But we all, Vicki, me, Billy, Tommy, everybody, Allison, everybody here uh, at Street Racing Channel was just ask, please, please refrain from any negativity or nasty comments about her, to her, or anything else. That's it, guys. That's it for tonight's video. I appreciate everybody watching. I thank you all very much for your support, and uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. we got a really good week coming up this week because Matt Rice is going to be here to work on his Nova. <laughs> Tuesday. Tuesday. So, good night, everybody.